Hi! Today, I'm going to take you all on a microscopic journey. An exciting journey into the incredible materials produced by the Calyx technology. The ever burgeoning demand for energy has become a major issue at the global level due to the sharp accrual of the world economy and population over the last few decades. The research community is strongly motivated to develop new, efficient and sustainable technologies. The increased use of rechargeable storage devices is expected to play a major role in facilitating the shift from the world's reliance on fossil fuels towards clean energy sources and our fight against climate change. This is why lithium-ion batteries, usually referred to as LIBs, are increasingly finding a way into our energy-driven lifestyles. So here at Calyx, we are driven to develop low-cost, safe, and easier to recycle battery materials that will help transition to a much more sustainable and responsible future. So let's start with the beginning. Lakshmi, could you tell us a bit about LIB batteries and how they work? So in a typical lithium ion battery, we have a lithium transition metal oxide and a as a cathode and graphite as an anode. In a cathode side, you have lithium manganese oxide as an example. So manganese, manganese and the oxygen are bonded together. So uh, are strongly bonded together and then they are ready to borrow electrons. And lithium in the crystal structure of lithium manganese oxide is uh, ready to give electrons. So this is the interesting part. When you charge a battery, lithium ions from the crystal structure of lithium manganese oxide are liberated to the electrolyte at the meantime, the electrons are transferred from the cathode to the anode side. They pass through a porous membrane called a separator, which is only ionically conductive. That's not electronically conductive. So the electron reacts with the lithium ion that has reached the anode side of the battery, forms a lithium atom. This lithium atom is intercalated or it gets inserted into the, each graphene layer of the graphite. This is called the charging of the battery. So this actually continues until the voltage reaches 4.2 volt, which, which is considered as the battery's charge in case of lithium manganese oxide and graphite battery. So during the discharge process, the opposite happens. The lithium ions are released from the graphite and it travels to the lithium manganese oxide, that is the cathode side. Since the lithium manganese oxide, the cathode was devoid of it actually forms a, it reacts with structure that was devoid of lithium ion, forms a stable lithium manganese oxide, like the brief before. So this is called the discharging of the battery. And this continues until the voltage reaches three volt. So this is a typically the working mechanism of lithium manganese oxide graphite battery. So this is lithium manganese oxide from Batman. So this is a cathode material that we produce in Batman. So we are going to do an XRD to identify its peak and measure the crystal structure of the sample of the cathode material. The, the produced sample is pure enough. Is that the LMO lithium manganese oxide material that we have produced. So we check all the purity and the crystal structure using this instrument. Tell me, Devin. What makes Calic batteries materials so special and how do they compare to others? Um, so what we found is like our Calix um, battery materials or the, the lithium magnesium oxide materials that we work with, um, we have a very unique multi-shell sort of onion structure, um, which is very unique to a conventional um, standard um, morphology of the same materials in the battery industry. So essentially, if you look at the literature, if you look at the commercial samples, all the other animals are having this um, polycrystal structure, which doesn't have this multi-shell structure at all. Um, we, th we think this um, structure is formed during the uh, unique processing steps that we use at Calyx. This multi-shell structure sort of offers some unique properties of our material. Um, it offers a very high um, power performance when you cycle at different rate. So what that means is like you can charge or discharge your batteries at a much quicker, um, um, in, in a much shorter time basically. Um, that sort of broadens the whole um, application of the battery materials that we make here. We've got this multi-shell uh, multi onion structure. 
um, it's essentially just like just like onion, right? So you can, when you charge discharge the materials, when the lithium ions goes into the material and coming out from the material, essentially what happens is you, you quite often get this um, volumetric expansion for the crystal structure. Um, if you are using some conventional um, uh, cathode materials, then what, hap what might happen is like the, the particles might just um, crack as you cycle for a longer period of time. But in our case, we think our multi-shell structure can um, sort of sustain for this uh, volume expansion. It can just absorb the, the volume expansion uh, for the crystals during the charge discharge process. So that's really um, uh, making our materials um, different and unique to the uh, materials on market. Uh, the unique thing about the Batman plant is it is the latest iteration, the latest uh, output of Calyx and, and the implementation of our um, Calyx DSR technology. That, that is our direct separation uh, reactor. Um, with this new iteration, we have it is electrically heated. It allows us a lot finer control in terms of the heating, uh, in terms of the plant. It allows us to test more materials, test different conditions to a lot finer um, well, control resolution. So there is, this plant allows us to take leaps and bounds and springboard our, ourselves into more applications. Fascinating. Let's have a look at how Calyx produces these uniquely shaped materials. At the heart of the Calyx electrode manufacturing process is the Calyx flash calcination or CFC technology. Micron size powder, which in the case of LMO production will be manganese carbonate is fed into an externally heated reactor. The powder is flash heated, causing the rapid expulsion of trapped and bound gases. The product is quench cooled to yield a highly porous, nano-structured and reactive material, which we refer to as nanoactive. The released gases, which in our case is CO2, exits the plant at the top as a concentrated, near sequestration ready stream of CO2. We then mix the nanoactive manganese oxide with a soluble lithium precursor via a solution doping process. The target LMO structure is formed following a second thermal treatment step. High surface area nanoactive intermediate manganese oxide reacts quickly to form the active electrode material, thus significantly reducing the time and energy requirements of the process, therefore reducing energy and cost. Calyx flash calciner can be heated electrically and is compatible with renewable intermittent power and is CO2 capture ready, further reducing the CO2 footprint of the Calyx electrode manufacturing process. Hi Ruth, so we're now sitting on top of the Batnam reactor. Can you tell us what happens here? Yeah, so in here what we have is a feeding system. So we put in the materials that are going to pass through the reactor in here. Um, we have a feeder here uh, that goes into inside the reactor and we can do all sorts of uh, monitoring and uh, review the variables that are going around here. So the material that we feed in here for batteries is um, a large variety of manganese oxide um, battery materials uh, that passes through the feeder that I can show yeah. you. So the material goes in here and we have a screw at the bottom that is just, depending on the speed of the screw, it's just uh, feeding the materials through the reactor. So you can see that at the bottom here is just a feeding system that goes uh, inside the reactor at the injection point. We've come back down to ground level where Claire is operating the reactor. Can you tell us what you're doing? So put our manganese carbonate in the top, uh, it will react in our reactor and it will come out as manganese oxide. 
um, I will collect the samples that are required and I'll pass them over to Davin, Chris or Matt on our batteries team um, and they will do further testing and processing from there. Back in the lab with Davin, let's check out what happens next with these samples. Uh, this is um, a continuously stirred um, tank reactor, we call CSTR. So we use this reactor to make a large batch of um, precursors for our battery materials. So what we do essentially is we, um, we get the precursors from the batman and then we just put the precursors into this reactor with, um, along with some other lithium precursors or some other chemicals and then we just add some water into the re uh, reactor. At the same time, we just stir and mix in them and try to make sure that we homogenize um, the different precursors. And then also at the same time, we try to heat it up and evaporate, um, remove the, mo uh, the water content in the, um, in the tank. At the end, we will get um, a paste um, of sort of the precursor and then we transfer to the oven for further drying um, before we do the calcination to convert that to the lithium. Um, uh, cathode materials for batteries. It's essentially just mixing different chemicals and just try to make sure we homogenize them in the solution um, because that's, um, that just offers a better um, physical contact of different chemicals and that facilitates the subsequent uh, lithation steps. That can significantly reduce the lithation time uh, when we do the calcination. I'm now with Matt, Calix's Deputy Chief Scientist. Assuming you're not going to do all this on your own, does Calix work with partners in that space? So, we, so as, part, as part of the CRCP that, that Calix leads, we are developing um, high performance advanced electrode materials for lithium ion batteries. So working with our partners at Deakin University and Battery Hub, um, as well as a local industrial partner, Boron Molecular, a specialist chemicals manufacturer, who are developing electrolytes and scaling up electrolytes for, that are compatible with the electrode materials that Calix are developing. And through that partnership, we've really been able to accelerate our development of these materials um, and, and also the testing of these materials in, in batteries. We've, we've started to hone in on, uh, on, on a manufacturing process and, and the properties that, that contribute to superior electrochemical performance in a battery cell. Now we're, we're aiming to, to pair those with compatible electrolytes and put them into uh, and develop a cell design that allows our materials to, to reach their full potential. Um, so we're doing that with, with Deakin University um, Battery Hub, but we're also um, working with a partner in the UK, AMT Power, who are working on the scale up of commercial format power cells featuring Calix materials. So at the moment, we're working through a program of developing the, the cell design. That cell design will then be scaled up and will ultimately be, be built into a battery pack that will then power an electric scooter that, we're, that we um, are aiming to deliver by the end of this year. Um, as part of our partnerships with, within the battery space, and Calix is supporting um, the ALC Training Centre Store Energy. Through that, we are co funded two PhD students and one um, postdoctoral research project on post lithium ion battery chemistries. Yeah, so, Calix is also a participant of the Future Batteries Industries CL, um, Cooperative Research Centre. Through that, we're investigating opportunities to apply Calix technology across the entire battery value chain, all the way from you know, the mining, the refining, the beneficiation of the raw materials through to the production of battery grade chemicals and then into the electrode materials and other componentry such as then through to the cell manufacture and pack production, finally through to the end of life, you know, recycling of battery products. The next stage is to, is to scale up the, 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 the process um, and deliver a manufacturing process that is competitive or even lower cost than existing uh, manufacturing processes, um, but delivers the high performance electrode materials that, that we're targeting. Um, I think you know if we talk about our sort of five to ten year vision. You know we've we've had some really good success with our lithium manganese oxide 
um, manufacturing processes and we are now starting to investigate the application of, this, of these processes to, to, the, to, to produce other um, electrode materials.